For the hastening of the reappearance of the master of our time, Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. The moon for the 1440th first year after the migration of the Prophet of the month of Muharram has been sighted. And the hearts have sunken in remembrance of that martyrdom which is unparalleled in human history. Up until yesterday, each one of us had our own trials and challenges and obligations. Our hearts were scattered, our minds were divided, we had our responsibilities, we had our duties. But it seems as if all this multiplicity and division has given its way towards one name which flows through the hearts and each and every single one of us and upon our tongues. And that name is none other than the name of Hussein. The Beit Yawsein. 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 You see, it's interesting when you think about it. You spend your entire life trying to avoid difficulty, trying to avoid sadness. That from the age of 18 to the age of 22, 23, you study 10, 11, 12 hours a day. Why? So later in your life, you don't go through hardship. You don't face sadness. You don't face difficulties. That you work from 8 to 5, 40 years. You work 12, 11, 13 hours a day. Why? So you avoid difficulty and challenges within your life. Your whole life you spend avoiding gham and sadness. But there's only one sadness within this world that instead of avoiding it, you anticipate it. You wait for it. And that's the gham of Sayyid al-Shuhada. That the day of Ghadir passes, you say 12 more days until Muharram. That the moment Ramadan passes, people begin counting until Muharram. No, when Muharram it finishes, you wait until the next year, and even after it begins, you say 10 more days until Ashura. 
40 more days until Arba'in. But what is it about this gham and this sadness for Sayyid al-Shuhada that makes it unlike no other gham and sadness upon this earth? You see, when sadness within the hearts is of a material nature, it takes the material form of this world. The material form of this world is challenge and trial and a lack of permanence, that you see the nature of this world. Something comes, it goes away. Another thing replaces it, it goes away. And that's what the sadness one has for worldly affairs it does, that it doesn't leave consistency and peace within your heart. But no, when sadness is of a divine nature, when sadness is from the obedience of Allah, when that sadness is in the gham of the wali of Allah, you find instead of breaking that peace within your heart, it brings peace and tranquility towards your heart. That it's an external manifestation of the verse which says, Ala That within the remembrance of Allah, the hearts they find rest. You know, the traditions, they speak about these tears that don't think that tears aren't mentioned within the tradition. When Shaykh Abbas al-Qummi, he writes his famous maqtal on Imam al-Hussein, Nafas al-Mahmoom, you find the first chapter towards that maqtal, he writes about the ajr and the reward of the tears for Aba Abdullah and sending la'an upon the killers of Sayyid al-Shuhada. That he mentions 40 traditions within the first chapter, that many different traditions are mentioned over there. But you find it's these tears which are in the obedience of Allah. It's these tears for Sayyid al Shahada about which Rasulullah he states, Ya Fatima, Kullu ain baqiyatun yom al qiyama illa ain baqat ala musab al Hussein. Rasulullah says, O oh Fatima, that no every eye upon the day of judgment will cry. That upon that day, where every reality is unveiled, that whatever a person spent 70, 80, 90 years hiding from everyone, everything is open upon that day. On that day, there will be difficulty, there will be challenges, but you find the tradition, it says, every eye will cry, except for that eye which cries over the musibah of Sayyid al-Shuhada, فَإِنَّهَا دَاهِكَةٌ مُسْتَبْشِرَ مِنْ نَعِيبِ نَعِيمِ الْجَنَّةِ For that I will be smiling and laughing from the blessings of paradise that that person he receives. You know, this Ashra of Muharram is amongst us once again. That we thank Allah for this divine tawfiq, this opportunity. That there are many in this hall that were here last year, but they're not amongst us. And the sad reality is that it's very possible that there are some in this hall right now that next year they won't be amongst us. That Allah has given us this opportunity that these days aren't like other days. The Quran, it states, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, chapter 89, wal-fajr wa layalin. That by the daybreak and by the ten nights, you know, when you look at the tradition of the sixth imam, the sixth imam would say, Iqra'u Surat al-Fajr. He would say, recite Surat al-Fajr. Why? Because this is the surah of Hussein ibn Ali. That this is that surah which addresses Sayyid al-Shuhada. It says, Ya ayyatuhan nafs al it says, O oh, contented soul, this is that chapter that says, Walayalin Asha, that by the ten nights. Mm. You know, the Mufassirin, they discuss that what are these ten nights? One group, they came forth and said, It, are te it is ten nights in the month of Dhul Hijjah. But no, there was another group that said, It is these ten nights that you find when the Quran it says, Walayalin Asha. It's a reference towards the first 10 nights of Muharram. That these nights aren't like any other night. That although that we begin our remembrance of Sayyid al-Shuhada, you find from this night of the first of Muharram, each and every single one of us begins a journey. And that is the journey of Ishq. 
that is the journey of the soul, that is the journey of returning towards man's origin, which is the creator of Allah. You see, the beauty of this journey is that although we are going towards Allah, that is where we came from in the original sense. That a person, he doesn't undertake a journey unless he knows something about the destination. But you find the Quran, it says, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. And you find it's through the wasila of Sayyidu Shuhada that we seek to facilitate this return towards the Creator. And it's my tradition that as long as I've been given the honor to serve Sayyidu Shuhada, to address the majalis of Imam and Hussein. The first night, I always speak about the philosophy of the Aza and the morning of Sayyid al-Shuhada and the philosophy of the movement of Sayyid al-Shuhada. You find it's a tradition from many of our ulama from the subcontinent, from Iraq, from Iran, wherever they may be, that this first night when the moon of Muharram is sighted, they spend this first night speaking about the realities of mourning Sayyid al-Shuhada. And the topic of analysis which I picked is examining that famous hadith of the eighth Imam, where he speaks to his companion Rayhan ibn Shabib and understanding the methodology to approaching the month of Muharram. That you find when this month has been given this importance, there has to be a way in which we approach it, a way which is dignified of this month, a way which allows us to maximize our benefit from this month. And you find there are a number of traditions that show that as soon as the moon of Muharram would be sighted, you would find that Ahlul Bayt alayhum as -salam, their behavior would change. You find our eighth Imam has a famous hadith, it's a lengthy hadith. He says, Inna yawm al Hussein akraha jufunana. He says, indeed, the day of Hussein has damaged our lives. That how much we remember Sayyid al-Shuhada. Doesn't your Imam say in Ziyarat al-Nahiya that every morning, every evening, I cry for my grandfather Hussein? That Ahlul Bayt they say that indeed the day of Hussein has damaged our eyelids. Later in this hadith, the eighth Imam would say, that إِذَا دَخَلَ شَهْرُ الْمُحَرَّمِ That as soon as the month of Muharram would set, لَا يُرَى ضَاهِكًا That his father, Imam, Imam Musa al-Kadim, he would not be seen laughing as soon as the moon of Muharram was seen. That as soon as this moon was seen, you find the reality would change. And it was upon the sighting of the moon of Muharram that Rayhan ibn Shabib, he walks in upon Imam Ali ibn Musa al-Rida salawatullahi wa salamu He states that I saw my master, how did I see him? He says, Ra'itu hazina. That I saw my master in a state of grief, I saw him crying. I said to Imam al-Rida, Oh Imam al-Rida, why are you crying? You find, he says, Oh Yabn al-Shabib, do you not know that the moon of Muharram has been sighted? Then he says to him, Yabn al-Shabib, Asa'imun anta, are you fasting, O son of Shabib? Yabn al-Shabib, he says, No, I'm not fasting. He says, Al-Yawm huwa al-Yawm al-Ladhi da'a Zakariya fihi Rabbahu azza wa jal wa qal fahabli min ladunka waliya. That what did Zakariya say? The Imam says this day of the first of Muharram is that day when Zakariya prayed towards his creator that, O oh Allah, give me a son. You find it stated within the verse that Zakaria he feared that his family members would take that right of prophethood, that right of authority, and they weren't capable, they weren't fit of that right. You know, it's stated about Zakaria. Who is Zakaria? You know, the mother of the lady Maria. Her name is Hanna or Martha, according towards the traditions. She had a sister by the name of Hanana. The sister of the mother of Maryam was married towards Zakaria. So Zakaria, Nabi Zakaria, 
is the maternal uncle of the lady Maryam. You find the mother and the father of Maryam, they made a dua that this child which is within the womb, as soon as this child is born, we will dedicate this child towards the temple. You know, in that time, in the house of God, there was a tradition amongst Banu Israel that oftentimes the parents, they would relinquish their right towards parenthood and they would dedicate the child in the services of that temple of Allah. That within there, they would learn ibadah, they would serve the priest, they would serve the guests of Allah. You find Zakaria, he was the head priest and the caretaker of Maryam. When he walks in towards the temple, he sees that there are fruits in front of Maryam. He says, oh Maryam, where did you get this from? Maryam says, Allah provided it for me. Then you know the khususiyat of these fruits is that the fruits of the summertime would be there within the winter. And the fruits of the winter time would be there within the summer. Zakaria, he goes through a realization that if Allah is able to do this, then at that point I will pray towards Allah to give me a son who will be my successor. You find Imam al-Rida states that dua took place upon the first of Muharram. At that point, Allah, he accepted the dua of Zakaria. And he said towards the angels, tell Zakaria, وَهُوَ قَائِمٌ يُصَلِّ فِي الْمَحْرَابِ That while he was standing praying within the mahrab, إِنَّ نُبَشِّرُكَ بِغُلَامٍ اسْمُهُ Yahya. That we give you good news of a son whose name is Yahya. Imam al rida he states that whenever you have any hajat, fast upon the first of Muharram, ask Allah, Allah will accept those hajat towards you. You find after that, the tradition of Yabna Shabib, it states, it states, O son of Shabib, know that the Arabs of the age of ignorance, they made it forbidden to fight and commit oppression within this month. But that Ummah of the Prophet, look what they did. That they did not respect this month, neither did they respect their Prophet. Why? Because they killed his family within this month. They took his women out openly within this month, and for that Allah will never forgive them. You find from this first portion of the Hadith, we understand a number of different things about the methodology to approaching the ayyam of Sayyid al-Shuhada, the methodology to approaching the month of Muharram. And the first realization that we need to make is that when we approach the month of Muharram, we need to avoid falling into the trap of what is called historicism. Then what is historicism? The definition of historicism states that the fundamental notion in human existence is historical events. And it is historical events which determine the rest of reality which is going on. There are too many in history, either in practice or in the recording of history, that when they examine the movement of Sayyid al-Shuhada, they only examine the historical angle. Now, we don't deny that there is a historical angle, but to only speak of the history is to limit Karbala. They say that Hussein, that when Muawiyah died, his son Yazid, he sends a letter to Walid bin Utbah in Medina that either kill Hussein or take allegiance because of that, he goes to Mecca, then he goes towards Kufa, he gets stopped, he's killed in Karbala. Everything is a historical reaction one after another. But you find, no, this isn't just that reality. The reality is, is that Karbala was the execution of the Mashiach and the divine will of Allah. Then what do I mean when I say it is the execution of the divine will of Allah? Does that mean that everything was predestined? No. You find you and I are asked of things according to our level. That we're asked to stay away from certain prohibited things. We're asked to pray, we're asked to fast, we're asked to give charity, we're asked to do different things. But you find the closer one becomes towards Allah, the higher his responsibilities they become. 
this is the reality of Sayyidu Shahada that the Imam he was demanded from Allah this request and, request and out of his ikhtiyar and his free will he carried out this movement that you find Sayyidu Shahada even at the age of six upon the deathbed of Rasulullah you know in Urdu poetry and in Persian poetry you often hear the mention of something called Wada'i Tifli that what is this wada itifli? That what is this childhood promise that Imam and Hussein he made? That when you go towards the tradition of Bihar al Anwar and you look at that chapter which speaks about the passing of the Prophet, it stated that when Sayyid al Shahada at the age of six, you find Jibra'il and Mika'il descend upon Rasulullah. They say, hey, O Rasulullah, that this is what will occur towards your family members, towards Ali, towards Fatima, towards Hassan, towards Hussein. You find each member of Ahlul Bayt, they accepted this reality. That you imagine a child at the age of six, he is being told that you will be slaughtered and massacred. That child at the age of six is accepting that reality. How can we understand Sayyid al-Shuhada upon the day of Ashura then? That when at the age of six, he showed us such realities that we can't understand this individual. That at the peak of his life, how are we to understand Sayyid al-Shuhada? You find this is that reality of the Imam. And when we come towards the Aza of Sayyid al Shahada, when we come to these gatherings remembering the Imam, it's not that historical aspect which pulls us, that we come, we listen towards the history. But you find nobody in here sits in this hall with the niyat of listening towards a historical lesson. No. Rather, you come here to please the heart of Fatima al Zahra. You come here to please Allah. You come here because it is a devotional act, because it is an act of ibadah. You find this is that second reality, the second methodology to approaching Muharram is don't limit it towards a material nature, towards an exoteric practice. No, recognize the spiritual reality within this life. You know, each and every mourner of Imam and Hussein has a position. That if you're sitting here within this hall today, don't think of it as something small. It's the du'as of somebody that bring you here. It's the du'as of that mother that upon her deathbed, she says, O oh, Fidda, when my son Hussein goes to sleep, make sure you put water at the bedside of Hussein. It's that mother's du'as who bring you here. You know, each and every one of us in this hall are different. We come with from different backgrounds. We have different mentalities. We have different inner natures. And you find those differences, they manifest themselves in different ways when it comes to the Aza of Sayyid al-Shuhada. And this point which I'm making is a very important point which I want each and every single person to pay attention to. You find people, they come from different backgrounds and they may express their mourning in different ways. When somebody expresses their mourning in different ways, this is not a moment to be judgmental towards them. You find some people are attracted towards the matam of Imam al Hussein. Some are attracted towards the martia. Some are attracted towards the lecture. Some, their hands, they raise wide. Some, they stand here like this, but they stay in a state of reflection and meditation. You find that each and every one of them has a position, and we don't know whose aza that Zahra will accept. That you want to know the status of the mourners of Sayyid al Shahada? The status or the mourners of Sayyid al-Shuhada is that they are the wasila through whom the promise of Rasulullah was fulfilled towards Zahra. So what do I mean? That the mourners are the wasila through which the promise of Rasulullah to Zahra was fulfilled. You find it stated that when Sayyid al-Shuhada was born, Rasulullah, he begins to cry. When Rasulullah he begins to cry, you find the rest of the members of Ahlul Bayt begin to cry. Zahra asks, O oh Rasulullah, that why are you crying? Rasulullah says, You see this Hussein, right? This Hussein will be killed in Karbala. 
Zahra says, Oh Rasulullah, when that happens, will I be there? Rasulullah says, Zahra, you won't be there. She says, Oh Father, will you be there? Rasulullah says, No, I won't be there. She says, Will Ali be there? Rasulullah says, No, Ali won't be there. She says, Will Hassan be there? Rasulullah says, No, Hassan won't be there. Zahra, she with pain in her heart, she says, Oh my father, who will mourn for my Hussein? You find it's at that moment. Rasulullah says, Oh Zahra, don't worry. Allah will create an ummah whose elders will mourn for the elders of Hussein, whose women will mourn for the women of Hussein, whose children will mourn for the children of Hussein. You know, I haven't started the musibah. But the haq of the first of Muharram is to build that state of gham and sadness within the heart of an individual. You see, from this tradition we understand that the mourners of Sayyidul Shuhada are that wasila to which the promise of Rasulullah to Zahra was fulfilled. When you sit in this majlis, don't think of it less than an act of ibadah. You know when they asked Ayatullah Bahjad, that, O oh, Ayatullah Bahjad, how do I attain a state of irfan and ma'rifah and recognition and spirituality? You find Ayatullah Bahjad says that spirituality is only found in two places. Either it is found in the haram of Sayyidul Shuhada or it's found in the majlis of Sayyidul Shuhada. Then he says this line. He says the majlis of Hussein is an extension of the haram of the imam. That if you can't be in Karbala, whose heart doesn't desire to be in Karbala upon that night? But if you can't be in Karbala, then go and attend the majlis of Sayyidul Shuhada. Then you know, I say this majlis is ibadah. That what gives me the haq to say this line? That people say, where is it within the Quran? I say the Quran may not give every detail, but it gives the principle towards every detail. The Quran, it says, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُدُوهُ وَمَا نَحَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ It says, O oh mankind, it says, O oh people, what the Prophet, he gives you, accept it. And what the Prophet, he prohibits you from, reject it. That then it's upon us to look. That is it within the sunnah of Rasulullah to mourn for Sayyidul Shuhada? You find this verse, it shows the reality of mourning for Hussein. That Allah, he shows within the Quran that, oh humanity, if you want to reach Allah, then your journey goes through drowning yourself in the reality of Muhammad and Mustafa. And how do you drown yourself in the reality of this prophet? What this prophet tells you to do, you act upon it. And what this prophet prohibits you from, you stay away from it. So it becomes upon us that did the prophet of God mourn for Sayyidul Shuhada? You find the traditions are clear whether within our works or in the works of other schools of thought, that time and time again, Rasulullah, he would remind his ummah of what would happen towards Sayyidul Shahada. You know, one day, Umm Fadl, the wife of Abbas, she sees a dream that Rasulullah is walking by. As Rasulullah is walking by, a piece of the flesh of Rasulullah falls within her lap. She says, Ya Rasulullah, what is the meaning of this dream? Rasulullah, he says, Oh, Um Fadl, don't think of it as a negative dream. Know that my daughter Fatima will give birth to a son. And that son will sit within your lap, O oh, Um Fadl. That is the interpretation of this dream. You find a day it came that Imam al Hussein was born. When Imam al Hussein was born in the lap of Rasulullah, Umm Fadl, she narrates that I see Rasulullah begin to cry. I say, Oh Rasulullah, why are you crying? She says, He says, Jibra'il descended upon me. He told me that my Ummah will kill this Hussein of mine. The tradition after tradition, go and look at Mustadrak al Sahihain. Go and look towards Sawaiq al-Muhriqa Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani. Go and read the traditions over there. 
You find another tradition, it states that Rasulullah, he says, Oh Um Salma, I'm not feeling well. I'm going into my room, Um Salma. And Oh Um Salma, don't let anyone enter the room. You find Um Salma, she narrates that I got busy. As I got busy, this Hussein, as a child, he goes in towards the room. He sits upon the chest of Rasulullah. When I noticed this, I came to remove Hussein. Rasulullah says, Oh Um Salma, don't remove. <laughs> this Hussein of mine. You find Um Salma says, Oh Rasulullah, you're the one who said, don't let anyone come within the room. But you find Hussein wasn't just anyone. You find the tradition, it states that Rasulullah had something within his hand. Um Salma says, Ya Rasulullah, why do you cry? What is in your hand? You find that Rasulullah says, Oh Um Salma, Jibra'il descended with that sand from that spot where Hussein was be killed. You find this sand was given towards Um Salma, that upon the day of Ashura, that as Ashur would approach, Um Salma, she would look towards the sand to see what was the fate of Hussein. Upon the day of Ashura, she would see that it would turn red within blood. She came to know what reality happened towards Sayyid Ashura. You see, this is that majlis. This is that majlis which has been considered ibadah. You know, Sheikh Jafar Shushtari, he wrote a famous book titled Khasa'isul Husseiniya. Within that book, he wrote down everything which was maksus and specific to Sayyid al-Shuhada and Sayyid al-Shuhada alone. You find within that book, he says, that the majlis of Hussein is like that maqam of Muzdalifa. Then what is the maqam of Muzdalifa? The maqam of Muzdalifa is that maqam where you pick up the stones, you throw it upon the statues of the shayateen. That although from the outwards you're throwing rocks upon those shayateen, the inward reality, the inward spiritual nature of the act is that you are throwing out bad habits from your life that you pick up one stone, it symbolizes a bad habit. He says the majlis of Hussein is like the plat spot of Muzdalifa, that when you come to the majlis of Hussein, you find the hearts, they become to be reformed through the majlis of Sayyid al-Shuhada. Then after that, he states that the majlis of Hussein is like the plain of Arafah. Then what is the plain of Arafah? You find that when Adam was sent towards this earth, Adam was upon one spot. His wife Havva was upon another spot. The plane of Arafah is when they meet each other for the first time upon this earth. The reason it's called Arafah, the word Ma'rifah comes from the same root, that it is the plane of recognition. Sheikh Jafar Shushtari says, that the majlis of Hussein is that plane of recognition. That when one wants to understand his creator, you do it through the wasila of Sayyid al-Shuhada. You know, many of you who have an interest in poetry, you've heard the name Joshmani Abadi. This individual was a poet within the subcontinent. You find that he was a Muslim. He wasn't a Shia. Then he became an atheist. Then he becomes a Shia. They say, oh man, what's your life story? That you were a Muslim, you become an atheist, then you become a Muslim again, and out of all of the different sects, you become a Shia, a follower of 12 Imams. He says, what allowed you, what drove you to come back? He says that it was no logical argument. I didn't study and I didn't study. There was one thing which I saw. I saw that Hussein sacrificed everything for his creator. That if a man is willing to make that sacrifice, then he must be sacrificing for a creator. That if he's willing to sacrifice for his creator, then there must be a creator whom he is sacrificing for. You find this is that reality of Sayyid al-Shuhada. And you find this tradition of Yabna Shabib. It mentions etiquette after etiquette. After this, the Imam he says, Yabna Shabib, in kunta baqiyan li shay'in fabki lil Hussein ibn Ali. He says, O oh, son of Shabib, if you ever want to cry over anything, whether it's your family problems, whether it's your broken heart, 
whether it's any personal trial, then make the niyyah that you're crying for Imam al You see, this act of crying is something which has been going on since the beginning of humanity, that Adam cried for Sayyid al-Shuhada. You say to me that, oh Sayyid, how can you make this line? There were no historians in the time of Adam to write what he did. I say, you're right, there were no historians. But those creations that when nothing was there and their light was there around the Arsh, you find their traditions mentioned that Adam cried for Sayyid al-Shuhada. That as Adam was going upon this earth looking for Habba, as he passes through the plain of Karbala, he falls upon the ground, his forehead hits the ground, he begins to bleed. He says, oh Allah, I am your prophet. Allah, he says, oh Adam, you didn't do anything wrong. But but, oh Adam, within your lineage there will be a prophet by the name of Muhammad. His grandson will be killed upon these plains, Gariban wa Adshan. His grandson will be killed upon these plains as he's alone, as he's thirsty. You know, it's stated that after Zakaria he made his dua. He was there, Allah revealed the names of Muhammad Ali, Fatima, Hassan, and Hussein alayhum as upon Zakaria. Zakaria, he says, oh Allah, when you revealed the first four names, I didn't feel sadness within my heart. But when you revealed the name of Hussein, I felt sadness within my heart. What is this? Allah says, O oh Zakaria, that within your lineage you find that Hussein, he will come, he will be this grandson of the final prophet, he will be killed. This is what Allah says. You find Zakaria says, O oh Allah, give me a son. And when my love reaches its maximum intensity for that son, have that son sacrificed in your way. You find the son of Zakaria is who Nabi Yahya. There's many parallels, although there's no comparison towards the Musiba of Sayyid al-Shuhada. You find there are some parallels towards Nabi Yahya. You find these are the days of mourning Sayyid al-Shuhada. You know, there was much to say about this tradition, and there are many lines left. For example, within this tradition, you find that Imam al rida says, O oh, Yamna Shabib, when Hussein was killed, the seven heavens and the earth, they mourned for Sayyid al-Shuhada. And then he says, my father narrates from his father, who narrates from his grandfather, that when Hussein was killed, there was red dust which was within the air. There was blood which was poured upon that day. Then he says, O oh, Yabna Shabib, that if you want to meet Allah with no sins upon you, then go and do the ziyara of Hussein. He says, O oh, Yabna Shabib, if you want a house with Allah, with the Prophet of God, then send la'an upon the killers of Hussein. He says, O oh, Yabna Shabib, if you want the reward of those who were martyred with Sayyid al-Shuhada, that whenever you remember Hussein, say, Ya laytani kuntu ma'ahum fa'afuza fawzan adima, that if I were with them, I would have achieved a great victory. Then he says, O oh, Yabna Shabib, that if you want all of this Yabna Shabib, and be happy within our happiness, be sad within our sadness, and hold on towards our wilaya. It's a lengthy tradition, and in the nights they continue. I'll mention more portions of this tradition, but I see the tears that begin to fall from the eyes, and the ulama, they state that when the tears they fall at that moment, recite the musiba of Hussein. <laughs> the what is the musiba of Sayyid al-Shuhada? You know, within this tradition, Imam al-Rida, there was one line I left for the end, and that line, it says, Yabna Shabib in kunta baqiyan li shayin fakkil al-Hussain ibn Ali. 
فَإِنَّهُ ذُبِحَا قَمَا يُذْبَحُ الْكَبْشِ The Imam, he says, O oh, Yabn al-Shabib, if you ever want to cry for anything, then cry over my grandfather Hussein, for he was slaughtered in the way a sheep is slaughtered. You know, the ulama, they've discussed that why did Imam al-Rida say this? Because when you slaughter a sheep, you give water towards that sheep. When you slaughter a sheep, you make sure no other animals are watching. When you slaughter a sheep, you do what? You sharpen the sword. But when Hussein was killed, neither was he given water, neither was the sword sharpened from 70 paces. Sayyidah Zainab would watch from the Laizanabiya. Shimar would sit upon the chest of Hussein. Why does Imam al Rida say, Inna Udubiya Kama Yudbahu al Kabsh? The reason Imam al Rida says this is that when you slaughter a sheep, no one is there to say, Stop, don't slaughter it, when they kill the grandson of Rasulullah. <laughs> you find the month of Muharram has started, the moon has been sighted. You know, it is that month that each member of Ahlul Bayt, they would remember the Masayib of Sayyid al-Shuhada. You find that Rasulullah would remember the Musiba of Hussein. You find Amir al muminin as he passes by the land of Siffin. He says, Isbir ya Aba Abdullah, that have patience, O Aba Abdullah. They say, O oh, Amir al muminin why are you saying this? Amir al muminin said that on his way to Safin, as he passes through Karbala, he says, Rasulullah had told me that this is that land where Hussein would be killed. You find Imam al Hassan upon his deathbed, that Imam al Hussein begins to cry for Imam al Hassan. Imam al Hassan says, Ya Aba Abdullah, Atabki Alayya. He says, Oh Aba Abdullah, do you cry for me? Abki Alayk, I cry for you, O oh, Aba Abdullah. You find each Imam, they remembered Sayyid al-Shuhada. But there was one Imam that whenever he got the chance, he would make sure there was a majlis, there was a gathering where Sayyid al-Shuhada was remembered. And that Imam is our eighth Imam, Imam Ali ibn Musa al-Rida. You find that one day, Di'bal al-Khuzai, he comes into the gathering of the Imam. The Imam says, oh Di'bal, do you have anything in remembrance of my grandfather Hussein? Debali begins to recite his Qasida. He says, Ya Madar Suwayatin. He says, Those houses where the verses of the Quran were recited. Khalat min tilawatin wa manzilu wahyin mughbarul arasati. He says, Those houses they become emptied. He says, Diyar Waliyan Wal Husseini Wa Ja'farin Wa Hamzata Wa Sajjadi Dilta Fanati. He says, In the house of Ali and Hussein and Ja'far and Hamza, you find that house has become empty. Then he says, The line, listen towards the line. He says, A Fatimu Kumi Yatatil Khair Wandabuni. He says, O oh, Fatima, stand up and cry. Nujumu Samawatin, that the stars of the heavens are upon the desert ground. Then he begins to recite. He says that there is a grave in Tus, and there is a grave in Najaf, there is a grave in Baghdad. At that point, Imam al Rida. He says, oh, Debal, can I say something that will be tamamu qasidatik, that will finish your qasida? 
you find at that moment Imam al-Rida, he says, Wa qabrun bitu sin ya laham in musiba. He says, and there will be a grave in Tuz. That grave, it's musiba, will be very great. You find the Ibn, he says, oh my master, I know the grave in Najaf, I know the grave in Karbala, but whose grave will be that grave in Tuz? You find Imam al-Rida says, oh Teba, it will be my grave in Tuz. You find us the Imam, he's telling Debal at that point a servant of the Imam comes. He says, oh master, stop speaking about your death for your sister Fatima. She has fallen towards the ground. I say, oh Fatima, you only heard about your brother. I sent my salam upon Zainab that on Ashura she would watch Shibar. <laughs> Raise your hands. I don't have any more energy to recite anymore. Raise your hands. <laughs> Through the right of the one who was Gharib in Karbala. Through the right of the one who was Madhloom in Karbala. That Ya Allah, wherever the followers of Ahlul Bayt are in difficulty, help them. Ya Allah, we pray for those who are sick and ailing amongst our communities, and we pray for the hastening of the reappearance of the master of our time. Ya Hussain, Ya Hussain.